Good morning and welcome to those of you who are joining us on YouTube this morning. Always good to worship with you there at home when you're unable to be here at church. For the next several weeks, we're going to be looking at the Lord's Prayer, and we're going to tear it apart piece by piece. We're calling the series, as we move towards Easter, Easter Connecting with God, because that's really the starting point. If we want some kind of renewal in the living of our lives, we need to have a starting point. We need to connect with God Almighty. We're going to look at these seven different phrases in the Lord's Prayer because every single phrase is an answer to the seven greatest stresses that you'll have in the living of your life. The things that cause you more conflict, more problems, more difficulty, more hassle than anything else, the, prayer, the Lord's Prayer can help us with all of those things. When you understand the Lord's Prayer, that is the meaning behind the message of the Lord's Prayer, you'll find that peace in your life will begin to soar to a new heights, and the stress will begin to decline. This morning we're simply going to look at the first, pra the first phrase of the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. It's on your worksheets. Sorry about the overhead today, but you have your worksheets right there. Matthew 6, 9 says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. There was a little boy who got this uh, phrase all wrong. He thought it said, Our Father in heaven, Harold is your name. Another little boy thought uh, it said, Our Father in heaven, I do not know your name. But today I want to just look at this phrase. This phrase that says, Our Father. Because when Jesus says this, said this, he really broke all of the stereotypes about God in two words. You see, up to this point, no one really knew God the Father. They knew about God, but, but God the Father had never been emphasized until Christ used these words. So today what I want to try and do is help us understand what God our Father is really like. What can I expect from God our Father because of Jesus Christ and what he has done? You see, the life of Jesus tells us what God the Father is really like. Well, what kind of a person is he? What kind of a person is God, our Father? What good does it do for me to trust in this one who died for me so long ago? How can he help my hurts? How can he help my problems? In this complex world that we're living in today with all that is taking place, how can he help me? How can God, my Father, help me? Well, I think there are several things that this teaches us that we want to look at this morning. First of all, we need to understand that God our Father is a caring God. He is a caring God. He wants you to know that you're loved. You're actually cared for. So if you don't get anything else out of the sermon this morning, I'd like for you to remember that you matter. You matter to God the Father. He cares for you. He loves you. He is interested in you. When he was with the disciples, that is with Jesus, when he was with the disciples, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Those are the words of a father, God our father. Let not your heart be troubled. Psalm 104 and verse 13, I believe on your worksheet. As a father has compassion on his children. Do you see that? As a father has compassion on his children. So the Lord has compassion on those, catch this, who honor him. Who does he have compassion on? Those who honor him. The very character of Christ is caring, loving, and compassionate. One time the disciples were out in a boat on the Sea of Galilee. A storm came up. They started taking on water and they started to sink. They were tossed back and forth. You know, 
like we are sometimes in life. You ever been tossed back and forth? They were tossed back and forth. And they asked that great question that we've all wanted to ask at some time. Lord, do you care? Do you care? We're drowning out here. Do you care? We're about to sink in this old complex world. Lord, do you care? Do you care? Have you ever felt that way? I'm going under, Lord. Don't you care? Do you care? The answer from Christ our God is, yes, I care. I care a lot. Years later, Peter, one of those disciples who was on that boat, wrote these famous words that we now read in 1 Peter in chapter 5 and verse 7. Cast all your anxiety, cast all your burdens, cast all your cares on him who? God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he is the one who cares for you. Does God care about your health? I believe he does. Does he care about your house payment? I think so. Does he care about your grades in school, kids? I believe he does. Does he care how about how you get along in your family today? Does he care about whether you're a success or a failure in life? Well, I, I believe God really cares. Does it matter to him? What's happening in your life? And the answer always is, yes, he cares. He cares more than anyone else. Look at Psalm 35 and verse 37. The Lord delights in the well-being of his servants. That's good news. The Lord is pleased with the success of his servants. That's you. It's like we uh, love to see our kids be a success, don't we? Don't we like to see them do well in life? Well, God our Father is like that. God our Father cares for us deeply, more than anyone else. Secondly, we need to learn that God our Father is a consistent God. He is consistent. He's reliable. He can be counted on. He's dependable. He's trustworthy. Jesus, for example, told his disciples, here's what he said in John chapter 15. I don't think it's on your, your worksheet. But he said, I'm the vine. You're the branches. I'm the vine. I'm consistent. I'm caring. I'm the one that will help you. In James 1.17, it says, Every good and perfect gift is from God the Father, who does not change like shifting shadows. Have you noticed that humans are sometimes unpredictable? They're a little fickle. Sometimes people say, well, I don't know what to expect from so-and-so anymore. Depending on their mood, one minute they're silent, the next minute they're violent. One minute they're kind, the next minute they stub you and stab you in the back. It's like, uh, I'm sure you've heard this old joke, but someone asked a lady, she said, uh, they said, did you, uh, did you wake up grouchy this morning? She said, oh no, I let him sleep. Well, I just want to say that God is not like that. The one, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who laid down his life for you, he shows us that he is very consistent in his dealing with us. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 13. This is a great verse. I think it's on your worksheet, isn't it? Even if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Isn't that a great verse? <laughs> you know what that says? When people are unfaithful, 
when people are inconsistent, when people are unreliable, I can count on God my Father because He is always consistent. His very nature, His very character says that He is a consistent God. You can always count on how He's going to treat you. That's such good news because everything in our world today is changing. When everything in your world is falling apart, and in my world, I know I can count on Christ. He's consistent. He's always the same towards me. No matter how I feel, I can know that God is caring. I know that He is consistent in the way He treats me. 160 years after Jesus died and was raised from the dead, there was a man by the name of Polycarp. <laughs> who was a great church leader. And he was about to be burned at the stake because he wouldn't deny his faith in Jesus Christ. But just before they lit him on fire, he said, you know, I've been serving Jesus for 86 years, and I have found him never to have done me wrong. So I'm going to trust in him. You see what he was saying? I found God to be a caring God. I found God to be consistent. So I'm going to keep trusting in Him. This is the difference between what God says about Himself and what all the other religions in the world say about themselves. All the man-made religions of the world make God out to be some kind of a tyrant. Someone to be feared. And you have to work your way to heaven. That's the only way you can get there according to all of the man-made gods. Go on long pilgrimages. Cut yourself so that you bleed. Suffer for a certain amount. And then maybe, maybe God will let you into heaven. Let me tell you, that's what you get with Islam and Hinduism and Buddhism, it's all up to you to get to heaven. But isn't it interesting when Christianity or really being a Christian is a relationship with Jesus Christ, but God came all the way to man, caring consistently. He came to us and said, I'll give you a home in heaven. I'll forgive your sins. You don't have to work for it. You see, Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He paid the price. So all you have to do is trust in Him and His sacrifice. Christ, God, does not change. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6 says, I, the Lord, do not change. He's immutable. He's unchangeable. When everything else is changing, when everything else in this old world is shifting, God is a solid rock for us to stand on at all times, at all times, in every situation. That's really good news. Did you know what the number one cause of rebellion among children are in the world today? Do you know why they are full of resentment sometimes? I read this too late. Well, one of my children is here but today, but, but I, I found this out too late about broken promises. You see, they are rebellious and resentful when we keep breaking our promise to them. Like I'll teach you to drive sometime. I'll take you fishing sometime. Broken promises. It breeds rebellion. But I want to tell you something this morning. Jesus Christ always keeps his promise. Jesus Christ always keeps his promises. And they prove true. Look at Psalm 18, verse 20. 
What a God he is. All his promises prove true. That's the kind of God, the kind of Savior, that reaches out to you today. You could say, well, I live in a hopeless world. You, you don't know what I'm going through. Now, I can tell you this. A caring, consistent Lord Jesus Christ reaches out to you today, and he's the one that can help you. Thirdly, God is a close God. He's caring, he's consistent, he's very close. The Bible makes it clear that when he is close by, he's always close by when you need him. In John 17, when Jesus was praying that high priestly prayer, prayer to his disciples, you remember he said, I'm with you, but, but I'm going to send you the comforter, Jesus, the comforter, and he'll live right in you. You see, that he was telling us he is available. He is accessible. He is right there with us, li living in our lives. The Apostle Paul talked about this in Acts chapter 17 and verse 27 when he said, God did this so people would reach out for him and find him. Isn't that interesting? God wants us to find him. Since he is not far away from each one of us, God is right here with us today. Right where we are. God is right here with us. And if we'll open up our life to him by faith, he will be in us and he will help us with all of the things we may be facing in our life. Today's world has really changed from the past. Today, many kids grow up with absentee parents, absentee parents in some of the big cities is what's causing a lot of the crime. Many parents are too busy. They're never around, hardly at home. Some parents are even gone on important days, perhaps, of their life. And I read somewhere where a lot of parents are detached, even when they're home. I don't know what causes that, but in other words, we're not paying attention, we're not building a family. Well, I just want to say to all of you who feel like you were abandoned even when you're home, that Jesus Christ is not like that. As your heavenly Father, he is close by, ready to help. There are three important statements that I want to leave with you this morning about God our Father. Number one, God is never too busy for you. Psalm 145, 18, I think it's on your worksheet. The Lord is near to all who call on him. When you pray, you don't get a busy signal. Whenever you say, I have a burden to talk to you about, Lord, he could handle the request. He's never too busy for you. And secondly, he loves to meet your need. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11, Jesus said, If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask? <laughs> you see, if as a human father, I like to do good things to my children, how much more does God our Father want to do for his children? Look at Matthew 6, verses 31 and 32. So don't worry. <laughs> That's what it says. Don't worry saying, what are we going to eat, or what shall we wear? Your heavenly Father knows you need these things. God loves to meet your needs. He is always close to his children. He may not give you everything you ask for. Your prayers may not always be answered the way you thought they were going to be answered. But I can tell you this. 
He's close by and he'll always meet the need of his children. One way or another, God will always meet the need of his children. Another thing to remember is that God is sympathetic towards our hurts. You say, I'm feeling low today. God understands. He understands why you're hurting. And he wants to help. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And he saves those who are crushed in spirit. You ever been crushed in spirit? Ever had a tough day? A tough year? <laughs> How about a tough life? You ever had one? Well, God understands. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father understands. Did you read it? Did you understand he's close <laughs> to the brokenhearted? Jesus said one time, like a hen likes to gather their chicks under the wings to protect them. So God likes to gather us under his wings to protect us. He's a close God. Finally this morning, we need to understand that God is a capable God. He is a capable God. Nothing is beyond his ability. Nothing is beyond his resources. Not even your taxes that have to be paid if they haven't already been paid. Whatever the problem, he can handle it. When Jesus was arrested, you remember that Peter cut the ear off of one of the soldiers. And the first thing Jesus did was reach out and heal that soldier. Look at what it says in Luke chapter 1 and verse 37. Nothing, nothing is impossible with God. Jesus is a capable God. It's amazing, you know, when your kids are growing up, they kind of expect you to fix everything and take, take care of everything. They bring you broken toys and armless dolls. And sometimes I think they, when they're small, they think you know everything. Can fix anything. They might even think you can afford anything. One boy talking to another boy said, you know, I believe my dad can beat your dad up. And the other boy responded and said, uh, well, I imagine so. So can my mom. <laughs> well, you see, when kids get older, they begin to understand, you know, parents have some limitations. They have limited ability. They have limited resources. And sometimes they're just guessing as to what's the right thing to do at certain times in life. But you see, God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> he has no limitations. He has unlimited resources, unlimited knowledge, unlimited power. Look at Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. God, God is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of infinitely beyond our highest prayer, desires, thoughts, or hopes. Jesus would say to you this morning, I want you to think of the biggest problem that you have in your life. And he's saying, if you'll give it to me, I'll help you handle it. I'll help you. You see, God wants to meet your need. He wants you to stop looking elsewhere to have your needs in life met. He can do more than your husband, your wife, your father, your mother, your doctor, your attorney, your government, your boss, or anyone else. 
So we are to look to him who has unlimited resources. Philippians 4, 19 says, My God shall what? Supply. Supply all your needs. All your needs. Not some of them. All your needs. That means everything from your finances on down. God has a way of taking care of us. Is everybody a part of the family of God? Or how, how do you get into the family? Into the family of God? Well, find Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26 on your worksheet. Here's what it says. We are children of God through what? Faith in Jesus Christ. Isn't that simple? That's really simple. We don't become part of the family. We don't become a child of God because we joined the church. It's a good thing, but that doesn't make you part of the family of God. We're not children of God because we promised that we're going to be good from today on. We're not part of the family of God because we were born in America or because we happen to be born in a Christian family. No, Christ simply said, put your trust or your faith in me. Believe in Christ. And he is the bridge to new life. I am the way, he said. No one comes unto the Father except by me. God says if you want to belong to the family of God. If you want to establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. Who is caring. Who is close who is consistent, then ask him to forgive your sins and trust in him as your personal Savior. Our scripture reading this morning that Jerry read, it says, to as many, to as many as received him, Jesus, to them he gave the power. Another translation says, the right to become the children of God. Have you said yes to Christ? If not, why not open up your life to Christ? Why not connect with God today? Just say, Jesus, I'm not waiting any longer. I want your care. I want your consistency. I need you close to me to handle all of the problems that I'm facing in life. If you'll do that, God will answer your prayer. Now we can all connect with God as we come around the communion table this morning. During the Last Supper, when Jesus was with his disciples, he infused the elements with new meaning in terms of a broken body and the shed blood of Christ. The fact that he would give his life on the cross. So as we come together today around the Lord's table, we are receiving a means of grace that connects us with God, God the Father, and sustains us, sustains us in our living for him and are living with each other. For we believe that Christ is present with us as we partake of communion. At communion, we are one with Christ, and we are meant to be one with each other. We are one in our ministry for the Lord. We are connecting to a resource, a resource, that can meet all of our needs and can help us to live the victorious Christian life. God bless those who have been watching on YouTube this morning. Now as we go to communion today, I just want us to...